Welcome to Go Live TV, the future in your hands. The only multicultural IPTV station that brings communities together. Over 2.7 million people have already watched Go Live TV anytime, anywhere. Welcome to the Ripple Effect broadcast. My name is Sharon Osborne. I welcome you to the Ripple Effect. It's the gathering place where women come together to be empowered in the word of God. And what so beautifully happens, it causes a ripple effect in their lives. I'm so honored to be the host of this broadcast today. I am blessed to be a part of your world and I truly count it a privilege and an honor that we are connecting together through the platform of Go Live TV. I thank God for the leadership and every individual behind the scenes that makes this broadcast so beautifully possible. So I wanna get going today because our topic is stand and get dressed. It's gonna be good. Let's pray together and let's just allow ourselves to anchor into this time and just allow God to have his way. Right where you are, won't you pray with me? God, we just arise this day and give you glory. We give you honor, Father. You alone are worthy of the glory and the honor and the praise, O oh God. In this moment, we just declare you the Lord omnipotent and you reign. God, we're so humble that we are able to come into your presence together. We enter this time in the unity of the spirit, God. There is no distance in the spirit before you. So God, I thank you for every person that connects today. You see the need of every person that connects today. So Father, I ask you because your manifest presence, the, the power of your Holy Spirit that's here right now, I ask for your presence and your power to move to the end point of this broadcast to minister to the one who's connecting in Jesus' name. That Father, you would begin to allow your anointing and your power to flow. Holy Ghost, you are the teacher. You alone teach with clarity and understanding that the word of God is able to make the simple wise. So Jesus, we give you preeminence over this broadcast and say you are Lord over this ripple effect broadcast today. So Jesus, move as only you can. Holy Ghost, speak through me, teach through me, and allow the hearts of every person connecting to be good ground before you. Let the word of God go forth with authority and power transformative power to raise somebody out of depression and to allow bondages to be broken today in Jesus name. So God, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. Holy Ghost, we honor you. Just have your way today in Jesus name. Amen. So we're connecting on a topic and the topic is that we've got to get dressed to stand. And so as women, you know, we can have a lot of clothes around us and a lot of times we don't know even what to wear during the course of our day when we wake up in the morning, that's what I'm saying. But there's something that before we put on any outer garments that God instructs us by his word to put on. That's what we're gonna focus in on to stand and get dressed. I want you to meet me, if you can, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6. And we're going to navigate from verses about 10 to around 19, 18, 19. Because I want you to take this journey with me. And I start off by saying that you are victorious, that you are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. You're victorious because God has positioned us that, to have a mindset and a heart set to know that we can live in victory every single day. And this freedom is anchored in how God positions us by the truth of his word. I love the book of Ephesians. Ephesians is this revelatory book that shows us that we are complete in Christ that we can be empowered to walk out our call before God. And it begins to show us as well that there will be opposition in the purposes of God for our lives. 
But God in his faithfulness begins to show us that yes, there may be spiritual warfare and attacks against us, but he employs us with spiritual armor. And that's going to be our focus for today. That armor out of Ephesians chapter six is our focus. The armor is used. It's supernatural and the supernatural elements one by one. And, and we're talking about the belt of truth. We're talking about the breastplate of righteousness. We're talking when we talk about the armor of God, that our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of feet, meaning our, our feet are shod and protected in a way. And we'll get into that further that we're also armed with the helmet of salvation, that we're armed with the shield of faith, and we're also armed with the sword of the spirit. So when we begin to employ the fullness of the armor of God, we're prepared in a supernatural way to contend with an unseen enemy in a supernatural fight. God is so good to us that when we catch that revelation that you are victorious, and we don't just say that as a, a confession, but we understand that we have been empowered by God to do so. So that's my target for our time. I want you to catch this with me. Meet me in the book of Ephesians chapter six. And I want to take my time. If that's okay, do I have your permission? Because I want us to get to the place that yes, we have an unseen enemy, but Jesus tells us according to John 10 and 10, that there's a distinction between us, between him and the enemy. The enemy came to kill, steal, and destroy, but Jesus says that he has come to give us life and give us life abundantly. So here's the reality when it comes to the enemy of our soul. He attacks us in two ways. He attacks us when we are ready for him to attack us, and he attacks us when we're not ready. So the word of God anchors us to a place that, that tells us through the armor of God, and employing the weapons of warfare that God gives us, we can always be battle ready. The picture to that, when we look at scripture, is that we've got to be intentional with this because the mission of the enemy is clear to kill, steal, and destroy. And so sometimes when people hear the topic of spiritual warfare, they get afraid. And God tells us these things, not so that we would be afraid, but to recognize by the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit that you are victorious. Jesus tells us in Matthew eleven twelve 12, that the kingdom suffered violent and the violent are able to take it by force. So there's an arising that has to come out of us to know that we can live victorious, yes, but also that we have to be intentional to employ the weapons of our warfare. You see, it allows us to stand even in the midst of those times where we feel like we are under attack, like what's happening here, what's happening there in our lives, but we can stand firm against opposition. We can stand firm against darkness and deception and the lies that the enemy would use against our lives. You see, as I was preparing for our time, I recognize that there are women that connect and they're a part of the Ripple Effect community that reach out to me and, and I know that they're in challenging situations in their lives. They're having challenges and I know you can appreciate that without getting into detail, but it's a challenging time. A lot of women are burdened right now with what they see happening in the spectrum of the earth, the violence and, and the loss of life. But I was reminded as I was praying and getting ready for our time, Jesus told us that these times would come. I want to hear Jesus' words out of Matthew 24, verses 6 to 8. Jesus tells us that you'll hear of wars and you will hear rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled. For all these things, they must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdoms against kingdoms. And there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various parts of the earth. But he says, these are just the beginnings of sorrows. So knowing that Jesus warns us of these things and we layer them with the fullness of the word of God, in these perilous times, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding has to undergird us. And the capacity of the power of God as we stand and get dressed must empower us to live with endurance and perseverance. 
I came to speak to the depth of somebody's spirit right now in the name of Jesus, that as you anchor into the revelation to stand and get dressed in the fullness of the armor of the most high God, you'll be able to live in the fullness of victory in Jesus name. I love what it says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 12. It says, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the full and the whole armor of God that you will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in this dark world, against evil spirits in the heavenly places. So God's word assures us that yes, there would be battles, but we're also assured of authority against the enemy. I decree over you that even though weapons may form, that they would never prosper in Jesus name, that you will always prevail as you employ the full armor of God. I love 1 John 4 and 4, which declares you, dear children, are from God and overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he who's in the world. So let's do this together. Let's continue to stand and get dressed to be intentional to put on the full armor of God, that supernatural empowerment by the supernatural grace of God. I want to have your permission today. I just really want to teach in our time. I, I know the word of God is so beautiful and so powerful that as we allow it to be, come so real to us, that revelation, it'll allow us to be empowered to live victoriously. I want you to hear what it says in the context of Ephesians chapter six. I'd be remiss if I didn't give you the backdrop of how this scripture became focused and aligned. A man by the name of the Apostle Paul was in prison. And as he was in prison, he was looking at the Roman soldiers around him. And the revelation came that even as soldiers were always battle ready, armed with their full regalia, full clothing to be ready for any battle. So we too, as believers and followers of Jesus Christ must also be battle ready in the context of knowing we are always in spiritual warfare. Fair. I hope you're working with me because the first piece of armor, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and share the broadcast. If you haven't already done so, get something to record with, whether it be your notebook, an iPad, or some type of tablet. Go ahead and take this because I want to layer the revelation so you can be able to employ the full armor of God on your life. The belt of truth is the first piece of armor that we actually hear of. It's out of Ephesians chapter six, verse 13 to 14. Meet me there if you can. It says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, withstand in the evil day and having all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. And I want you to get this picture that the Roman soldiers would wear this belt around their middle section, their waist, and that belt contained their armory, anything that they would need for battle. And the moment that they put it on, they were battle ready. And in the event where they were off duty, that would be the only time that they would take off that belt. And so in the context of our lives, we true have to always be girded up in the belt of truth. Why is it so important? Because the belt of truth will allow when the enemy brings lies to us and deceptions to us, we would never get tossed to and fro because it's the belt of truth that undergirds the revelation of our lives. This belt of truth only becomes manifest in our life as we make a conscious decision and a conscious choice to allow the word of God, holy scriptures, to be the only anchor for our identity and what affirms us and confirms us. That's only available the moment that we really receive Jesus Christ as our personal savior, because he is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is so beautiful because he tells us in John 8, 32, that you will know the truth and it's the truth that will set you free. So our big opportunity as women is to operate as women of integrity to allow the truth of God to be our source of truth. Psalm 86, 11 reminds us, teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. 
And it's so important because right now we are being bombarded by so many things. We're bombarded by so much noise, whether it be rumors or gossip or scandals or murmurings and negativity. But it's only by the belt of truth and the truth of God that we can cut through all of that noise to arise and be victorious. So what's our big action step? Let's do this together. Let's allow ourselves to be immersed in the truth of the word of God. Let's begin to allow the word of God to be that stabilizing belt in our lives, to be the ultimate source of everything we say, everything we do, and anything we get connected to that we use it by the measure of the word of truth. It's so important that as we do, we allow ourselves to be so intentional to obey the word of God. I want you to connect with me on the, the next piece of armor. It's the breastplate of righteousness. I want you to meet me in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14. It says, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, put on the breastplate of righteousness. And so it's only the righteousness of God that protects us. I want you to hear as we layer this, we're going to connect this with 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. It says, God made him, meaning Jesus, who, was, who had no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. It's so beautiful that through Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, that it allows us to die and be free from the bondage of our sin to begin to come alive in righteousness. The moment that we receive Christ Jesus, we throw off all our unrighteousness and Christ Jesus robes us in his righteousness. This righteousness is impenetrable to the enemy. You see, this breastplate of righteousness on a soldier, it literally covered their vital organs. So in the event that they were in battle, if something came to penetrate that breastplate of righteousness, it couldn't. It would literally protect them. I want you to think about it in our modern times, like kind of like a police officer and, um, let's see, their um, bulletproof vest is the best thing I can think of, that when a bulletproof vest is on an officer and a bullet comes at them, the, bullet, the bulletproof vest absorbs the, the impact of a bullet and it saves their lives. It's no different for us that when we put on the righteousness of Christ Jesus, nothing the enemy brings at us can come against how we affirm ourselves in who God says, us, who says we are, no matter what condemnation, no matter whatever accusations of our past. It's the breastplate of righteousness that guards our heart. But we have a responsibility, and I want you to hear what it says in Proverbs 4.23, it reminds us that we too have to keep our heart and we have to guard our heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life. And so Jesus builds on that for us in Luke 6, 45. He says, uh, the good man brings good things out of the good treasure of his heart, but an evil man out of the evil of his heart speaks evil things. Out of the overflow of our hearts, our mouth speaks. So what's our big opportunity that we've got to stand and get dressed with this breastplate of righteousness that we cause this literal hedge of protection around our hearts, that we cover our hearts with the blood of Jesus, that in Jesus name, nothing the enemy would try to put to us to penetrate us. It would never be able to penetrate the breastplate of righteousness. Glory to God. And I want to connect it to the next piece of armor that we'll look at, which is the gospel of peace. I hope you're working with me because I'm wanting you to get so empowered to live in victory. Ephesians 6.15 declares, and I'm reading the amplified version. Having strapped on your feet the gospel of peace in preparation to face the enemy with firm-footed stability and the readiness produced by the good news. And so I want you to think about this, that soldiers, when they went into battle, they didn't go wearing flip-flops or open-toe sandals. It just didn't make sense that their footwear, the boots that they wore, were very strategic. They allowed the feet of the soldiers to be protected, but also they were used so that the end, they would be able to run forth and even stand firm when they were assaulted by the enemy. I want to help a woman today to understand that these your feet can be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace for you to understand that you are firm through Jesus Christ and that you don't have to be tossed to and fro, but you can be grounded and rooted and steadfast and firm knowing that the peace of God can 
keep you surpassing your even your your simplest and your wildest understanding I want to connect you to this that when we do this we are able to stay calm and we're able to stay peaceful regardless of what is going on around us but it takes us being so intentional and I want to reference this scripture out of Isaiah 26 and 3 it says God will keep us in perfect peace whose minds are stayed on him and our minds can stay on him why from this verse it tells us because they trust him you see we can live in peace and there's a blessing according to the word of the lord it says blessed are the peacemakers for they are called the sons of god so in this season i'm asking you to keep your mind anchored in god keep your mind anchored in his promises keep your mind anchored by the empowerment and the anointing of the holy spirit to keep you firm in the things of god so that you can allow yourself to live in peace and as we do we have this incredible promise coming from romans 16 and 20. it says the god of peace will crush satan under your feet so allow yourself in Jesus' name not to let the enemy to rob you of your peace, but to keep your mind stayed on the Prince of Peace. I hope you're still working with me because now we're going to look at the next piece of armor, which is the shield of faith. It comes out of Ephesians 6.16. It says, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the enemy. See, right here, I want to encourage a woman of God. I got to get you to stand up and get dressed to raise up your shield of faith that even when the enemy throws darts at you like worry, he throws darts of unbelief, he throws darts of condemnation at you, you would begin to raise up a shield of faith, not cowardly, but you would quickly raise up a shield of faith around him so that when you do, you show the enemy that no matter what he throws at you, he can shoot his shot, but your confidence is in God. Hebrews 11, 6 reminds us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So you've got to allow yourself to water your faith so you would always trust Jesus right now and you would trust Jesus with your future. The enemy may shoot his shot at you and whatever he tries to do, it's not going to get through because you've lifted up that shield of faith. It will begin to block any assignment of the enemy and quench it because the God of heaven and earth is with you and that Jesus Christ alone, as you call on him, he will begin to author and finish your faith that no weapon in the name of Jesus, no weapon formed against you shall ever prosper, that any tongue that rises up against you will be condemned, for this is the heritage of the Lord. I implore you to allow your faith to grow in the Lord, to allow your faith to grow on the truth of the word, so your natural reaction will always be to lift up a shield of faith no matter what comes against you. Glory to God. I got to get you on this next um, armor piece, and it's the helmet of salvation. We hear it coming out of Ephesians chapter 6, and verse 17, it reminds us to take the helmet of salvation. And so for a soldier, I need you to get this picture that a soldier does not go into battle with nothing on his head. His head was everything he needs to see and to hear and to process everything around him. So he would recognize that soldier that they've got to protect their head, that any blow to their head would bring them disoriented and oftentimes it would be fatal. And so when we think of ourselves wearing the helmet of salvation, it's connected to who we are in Jesus Christ to begin to have the mind of Christ that in any situation where the enemy shoots arrows and he shoots condemnation at us and he tries to rock us with blows and attacks against us, the helmet of salvation reminds us that we are employed with the mind of Christ. The word of the Lord tells us, let this mind be in us, which is also in Christ Jesus. I hope you're working with me because now more than ever, we've got to guard our minds and that we have to do at all costs. It says to us in 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 10 and 5, it says it, it is able that we're able to break down any strongholds, anything that tries to lift itself up against the knowledge of God and that we hold it captive, meaning we commanded to come into the obedience of Jesus Christ. So we've got to be diligent to cast down things like imaginations, and we've got to cast down 
unwelcome thoughts when they come at us. We've got to be able to cast down and take captive any unholy thoughts that might come against us. A negative mindset, all of that begins to weigh us down and begins to separate us from the revelation of who we are in God and our revelation of just how much we are important to him. I want you to hear what it says, and we do this in a practical way. The Word of God gives us instruction that when we're guarding our mind, we have to do this led by the Holy Spirit to begin to filter out anything that is not of God that we just don't need to think about. Philippians 4 and 8 says, whatever is true, we think about that. Whatever is honorable, we think about that. Whatever is right, we think about that. Whatever is pure, we think about that. Whatever is lovely, we think about that. Whatever is of a good report, we think about it. If it's got some praiseworthiness to it, we think about that. And if what we're thinking about doesn't begin to align with that, we have to reject it. See, the Holy Spirit is the only one that can reveal the roots of our thoughts. It's the Holy Spirit that when we put on the helmet of salvation is able to renew our minds to the glory of God, that our minds can be steadfast and at peace, and that leaves us steadfast and immovable in all our ways. Let's anchor it with the next piece of armor, which is the sword of the spirit. I hope you're still working with me because Ephesians 6, 17 tells us the sword of the spirit, and it tells us it's the word of God. And I want to be clear with this one that we can't underestimate the power of the sword of the spirit, which is the word. I want you to think about a soldier who goes in the battle with no weapon. And so at the time when the apostle Paul was showing us this um, picture, they would use weapons of swords. And so a soldier, in order to go into battle, would have to know how to employ the sword, both offensively and defensively against their enemy, or else they would never survive in battle. And so it's no different for us. With the word of God, we've got to be able to employ it both offensively and defensively. And the clear example to looking at that is Jesus. I love him because Jesus shows us, he, the Bible says Jesus is our express example on how to live in the earth. He's the express image of God. And as Jesus walked in the earth, he was challenged by the enemy just like we were. Time does not allow me to go into detail, but when we look at the fullness of Luke chapter 4, every time the devil, the enemy of our soul who comes to kill, steal, and destroy came against Jesus, Jesus employed the word of God, and he would just stand and say, it is written. And so if Jesus contended the enemy with the sword of the spirit, which is the word, then how much more for us? So I've got to get us to this place of understanding that like Jesus, we have a big opportunity to grow in diligence, to study the word of God, to rely on the Holy Spirit as we ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten our minds with the revelation of the word of God, to how to apply it in every situation and every circumstance of our lives. And the last piece of armor, as I'm getting ready to close, is one that's often neglected. And we find it in Ephesians 6.19. It's this weapon of prayer. It says, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in prayers for all believers everywhere. And so here's the reality that I want to get you to, is that whatever you do, don't stop praying. Don't, 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 don't stop praying every day, all day, all the time. And I want to talk about that a little bit more because prayer in itself is the piece of armor that really holds everything together that makes the armor of God complete. I love what it says. It says, pray at all times in all occasions. And so it's only the Holy Spirit, when we ask the Holy Spirit, is able to teach us how to pray. It's the Holy Spirit that can guide us in those moments when truth be told, we don't even know how to pray. We don't even know what to pray. But if we allow the Holy Spirit to pray through us, we see prayers that are perfect in every situation. We also allow ourselves to pray into the will of God to bring us into, a, into alignment with his will for our lives. I love the beauty of 1 Thessalonians 5.17. It just tells us to just keep praying without ceasing. 
So that prayer that we pray is allowing us to communicate with God, where we talk to God and we also allow him to talk to us. It's this beautiful, unbroken flow of dependency and fellowship and communication with him. So why am I telling you this, that in this hour, in this season, you can employ that weapon of prayer. You can employ the weapon of prayer to speak to mountains that are not moving in your life. In the name of Jesus, you can begin to employ that weapon of prayer to come against every opposition and darkness that comes against your life. You're able to use that weapon of prayer to even now come against, to decree and declare some things, to watch them come to pass in your life in Jesus' name. I truly hope that you've been encouraged. Allow yourself to start the day with prayer, to end the day with prayer, and to allow yourself to be anchored in thanksgiving in Jesus' name. I hope you were encouraged in our time together that you would put on the full armor of God, that in this time, in these perilous times, you can live victoriously through Jesus Christ, that you can stand and get dressed each and every day knowing that you are more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. I want you to believe it by faith and act it out by faith in Jesus' name. Jesus is coming back soon. And he reminds us so beautifully by the word of God that only those who endure in the end will be saved. And only those who endure to the end will be overcomers. So as I close my time with you, I just want to give somebody who connects today this opportunity to connect in the word. But I want to pray through the full armor of God if I could right where you are. Father, we just give you glory and we give you praise. God, we thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you for the authority of your word that gives us revelation to understand that, that we are empowered to live victoriously every day in Jesus' name. That we're able to put on the full armor of God. So I'm touching when agreeing with someone connected connecting today that we're getting to stand and we're going to get dressed. We're going to get dressed in the belt of truth, that the truth of the word of God would undergird and anchor our lives. We are now putting on even now the breastplate of righteousness to begin to guard our hearts. Oh God, God, even now I pray for somebody that they would allow their hearts of a heart to be changed from a heart of stone to a heart of flesh before you. Oh God, that God in this hour, you would teach each one of us how to guard our heart with all diligence in Jesus name. God, I thank you right now that our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, that we go forward with the gospel of peace on our feet as peacemakers for blessed are the peacemakers for they are called the sons of God. Holy Spirit, teach us how to walk in a fullness of peace as our minds are stayed on the Lord. God, we thank you right now for the helmet of salvation that begins to guard our minds in the name of Jesus. That God, as we wear the helmet of salvation, it is the mind of Jesus Christ that comes upon us even now in Jesus' name. That we follow the fullness of Philippians 4 and 8, that we will filter our thoughts as we are led by the Spirit of the living God. God, we thank you even now for the... Uh -huh, shield of faith that quenches every fiery dart of the enemy. God, we thank you that every man is given a measure of faith, so we allow our faith to be watered by the word of God. Holy Ghost, increase our faith. Show us how to walk our faith out, that we choose to walk by faith and not by sight in this hour. God, we thank you for the sword of the spirit. Jesus, we thank you for your example out of Luke chapter four, that we're able to use the word of God offensively and defensively against the enemy. Holy Ghost, arise and allow the, the word of God to bring understanding and revelation that we arise in that example to declare it is written in every circumstance and every situation that we face. That God, we are fully clothed in the identity of Jesus Christ through the armor that the God of Israel is our rear guard, that we're not left uncovered. So God, right now I cover every person connecting under the blood of Jesus Christ. And I ask you, God, that the revelation that's received today, God, you would teach us how to live it out moment by moment, that in these perilous times, oh God, that we would arise and stand and get dressed for your glory. So God, for each person connecting, I pray you would bless them that you would bless them indeed and you would continue to enlarge their territory, that God, even now, that your hand would be upon them and you would keep them from every evil and keep them in perfect peace. That God, as I wrap up this broadcast, I bless your name for what you've done today. 
And with that, my time with you is complete. If you have not already done so, I want to hear from you. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram at This Is Sharon Osborne. Send me a message and let me know the one thing you took away from today's broadcast. And if you haven't already done so, go ahead, like, and subscribe to Go Live TV. Stay connected with what God is doing to this, through this amazing network. And with that, that's my time with you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his shalom, his peace. Until we connect again, the Lord's blessings and peace to you. Ciao for now. This is our family. This is our life. And we are Liu.